A E B S C D F G J I J K L M N O P R S S T U V W X V Z in 1889, a German priest, Johann Martin Schleyer, had a sleepless night in which, as if in a waking dream, there came to him the perfect language. A language that was beautiful and logical. He was not the first. There have been over 2,000 invented languages, but his was the first to gain wide acceptance, and he called it Volopuk. Binob Ralph Midgley, Binob ex professoren, eler nob Volopuki uniel balmil tsultum veldeglul. Binob Brian Bishop, Binob Chifal Volopukamufa, eler nob Volopuki in yels luldeg. I'm seventh in succession in the post of Chifal of the Volopuk movement, the first one of course being Johann Martin Schleyer himself. The tradition within the movement is that the leader at any particular time selects the person who is to follow him. This ensures that there is a continuity, that he's got somebody who will be able to take over any material that he's got and that he can continue the spirit of the movement. La unua leziono, la familio en la sido chambo. Learning unit one, are we all nutcases? You have to be a nutcase to learn Volapük because there are five cases. The idea of an invented language is said to go back to the first century BC, but by the 13th century, there was an international language in use throughout the Western civilized world. It was Latin. Latin is unlikely to fulfill that role again, despite updating by the Vatican Dictionary to include such words as atom bomb and OK. The philosopher Descartes was the father of the ideal of the invented language, but he did not invent one himself. Bishop Wilkins of Chester published the first fully developed scheme in 1868. His system of universal classification presented a formidable task of memorization. However, there was an explosion of artificial languages from the late 19th century onwards. Don Gasper is one of the last remaining speakers of the language Occidental, created by Edgar de Waal, an Estonian naval officer in 1921. Mi nomin es Don Gasper. Durant multi annus, yo interessa me pri li interlinguistica. Occidental es li nomine original del lingua interlingue. It es li lingue de paroles internacional derivat del chef lingues europan. It is comprensible a omni parlantes de europan lingues. A uh, bin un casti de la hardly si a ah, si fefio bin un chenic mm. uh, cliffs mm -hmm. estachon de la li mm -hmm. id uh, Melapon, mm. Melapon Elash South End, been on Usio. Mm. Go up Salogo, go up Salogo, now. At its height in the 1890s, Volopu claimed a million adherents, but they nearly all defected to a new language invented by a Polish oculist, Ludwig Zamenhof. 
Mi nomo estas Will Green. Mi estas la nacia secretario del Esperanto Asocio de Britio. Mi lernis Esperanton anto eble quinde iaroi. Ca mi estas Ian Jackson, generala secretario de Universale Esperanto Asocio. Mi havas esperantistan edzinon, ca ni usas la lingvon citie heime en Londono. I have a very special affection for Esperanto. It was the very first invented language that I ever learned. I always admired Dr. Zamenhof and read the Vivo de Zamenhof as a young man. Mi estas Rick Dalton. Mi estas solicitoro, mi estas ordinara persona, said mi usas Esperanto. Mi usas gin de tempo al tempo en mia laboro, Mi usas Esperanton, tiam mi voyagas. There have been a number of major figures who have spoken Esperanto, going right back to the early days. Tolstoy was one, and uh, the editor of the Times, who went down with the Titanic, was a keen supporter of Esperanto. In later years, we've had um, Harold Wilson, and we've had Tito, and the president. Interlingua, like Occidental, is based on the common elements of several European languages. Interlingua is said by its supporters to be readily understandable, without study, over much of the world. My name is Brian Sexton. I am Secretary of the British Interlingua Society. Io es bibliotecario pensionate. Mi nomine es Peter Gopso. Io es maestro de linguas moderne e professor de teologia. Vaste dispergite gentes regnos et imperios proximos et dissidentes presso et distantinos Nos mi forma continente, ad nos forte continente. Meis mi sempre differente, a un unión esser. La tua lezione, la visitantoi en la sido ciampo. Learning unit two. Everyone needs roots, not only people, but languages too. In 1817, a French music master, Jean-Francois Sudre, created the most widely acclaimed artificial language before Volopuk, Sol Re Sol. Based on the tonic Sol Fa, it could be sung, whistled and played on a musical instrument as well as spoken. Words were grouped into classes, so that whilst do sol do means to be hungry and do sol re is to eat, do sol la is to drink and do sol si is water. Sol re sol won several prizes in the middle of the 19th century and was endorsed by many eminent men. There were 13 different ways of communicating in the language including a deaf and dumb version, flags, the colours of the rainbow, bells and cannon. However, it was extremely monotonous and difficult to learn. My sisters are dead. One must always prefer the useful to the agreeable. Universal language is a means of peace and unity.
there have been a wide number of classics translated from English into Esperanto, particularly Shakespeare. In more modern times, um, even the likes of Winnie the Pooh has found its way into Esperanto libraries. There are lots of detective stories, you know, there's everything from poetry to pornography uh, written in Esperanto. There are a considerable number of books in interlingua. Some of them, of course, are dictionaries and grammars. You have to start with those. I only the other day received a translation of uh, two uh, uh, stories by Bertolt Brecht in very good Volapük. Angoroi was the first full-length feature film to be produced in Esperanto and created quite a stir at the time. Bone. Al porto la schlossilon del mistero. Since then, there have been a number of other pieces of uh, cinema produced in Esperanto, but Angoro remains the first and will always have a place in the Esperanto community's heart. Hamlet's soliloquy in interlingua. Esser o non esser? Le question es elo. Si il es plus nobile in le mente souffrir le fundas e fleschas del fortuna ultragiose? Putre! Repatuan mi silenton! Sterculi! I've written several poems in Volapük. Here's one which I wrote on the occasion of a holiday in London, no, two years ago. It's in 48 syllables. Cholu mel smele bel pedutif lif suklif vuterans o yunans unudels bels smels fails evakins TV ends mysteric, ephredic, cholumel, finu del, vokedob, keluvob. Naming the languages they had invented exercised their creators' considerable powers of invention. There are the variations on Esperanto, the imaginative names. the very short names and the very long ones. There are the idealistic names and the practically unpronounceable ones. The word Esperanto means one who hopes. It was originally the name of the person who published the language. Volapük means language of the world. Puk means speech or language. Vol means world and the R in the middle is the link between the two parts of the word. The word glossa means tongue, language. Ron Clark and Wendy Ashby have modified Lancelot Hogburn's interglossa of the 1930s based on Greek and Latin roots and created their own new language called glossa. Oh, he does folk glucose, Seidici in Porti, in Sola, for Kali D. Ah, for an Urari Hedo. Yeah. Um, Como plu pre glossa D. Hmm. Longy term, eh? <laughs> Mega term. Uh, quanto annual? Mm. Circa bise. In the early days, we only had a manual typewriter. Mm. And so it was a case of just typing the lists of words, pasting them up with right. glue, and photocopying them onto paper. It's non stop. There's nothing exciting about it at all. It's just tedious, hard work. Just like that. I don't think all mm. of it's so tedious. 
It's interesting getting letters from people oh, that yes. have only yeah. just received a dictionary and then they send mm. a postcard or a short mm. letter in the language yeah, to us. Yeah, that's true, yes. G coming into Glossar has given me a great geography lesson. I'm always <laughs> getting the atlas out to see all these nice exotic places. I very much like travelling. Mi fo amo viaggia. I like learning languages. Mi amo gaini ski de plu lingua. We've really cut off social life during the past few years. We've come back into it now because we're meeting quite a lot of Glossal speakers. Mm. And it's, uh, I don't think it's a very healthy way of mm. life, is it? It hasn't I mean, been up to now, but I think no. it is now. But our own interests are in ecology and in a general education and improving, uh, getting rid of poverty and ignorance in the world. And uh, we're convinced that uh, Glossal is going to play a large part in that. They claim that there are a nucleus of people who support them, but there is no evidence that anyone can speak the language or can actually use it. Everything you ever see is in these duplicated sheets, which are always written by one or other of the same two people. There must be about two to three hundred speakers of Glossa in England. And uh, scattered about the world in 18 different countries. In the world there are approximately a million people who use Esperanto at, uh, shall we say, a meaningful level, and I would say several million who have a smattering of the language. Bullapuk is used by, I would say, something like 30 people across the world. In Great Britain, Volapük has a crash course consisting of 10 lessons. This has been very popular and up to present about uh, six people have learnt it. One is still learning it, of whom I know personally. The quest for a perfectly logical language resulted in several schemes consisting only of numbers. Sol re sol could be expressed in numbers. Science and progress are inseparable. One cannot enjoy one without the other. In Gibson's code, devised by an American artillery officer, parts of speech were strictly classified by number, as in, the boy eats the red apple. And, I love you, in Timerio, created by a Berlin architect called Tima, becomes 1, 80, 17. Un, du, kiel, fol, queen, ses. Set. Ok. Nona. Deka. Vilcho, we have a letter on Chitsia Prila Manifestatio in Stoke on Trent. Do we have a symphony? We have a symphony. Do you mean I have a folio in Bridgie? No, we have a symphony. Do we have a symphony? Esperanto is the international language. It's easier than other languages. Please pick up an information leaflet here in La Internazia Lingua Esperanto. We're asking for Esperanto to be taught in schools. We're asking for Esperanto to be broadcast on the radio. We're asking for Esperanto to be used in the European community as a common second language. We'd save millions and millions of pounds. Your money, of my money. Support Esperanto La Internazia Lingua. Please take a leaflet about Esperanto. We have information. When you come to the thought that over half of the administrative budget of the EC is spent on translation, people see it hits everybody. It's hitting your pocket and my pocket not to have an international auxiliary language. We use an awful lot of paper for translations. Learn Glossa and save the trees. Yeah. That was a good headline. Yeah, Aprende Glossa e salva Udendra. La quara leziono, la salono. Let's, just for the sake of argument, assume you had a language which starts out coming from the Germanic group. It was, uh, say, based on Anglo-Saxon. And let's say you got a bit of uh, French mixed up with it. Then you started putting bits of uh, Hindi and bits of Malay in it, and you end up with quite a mishmash. In theory, it just couldn't possibly exist. Nobody could speak it. Only I'm talking about English. English spelling, of course, is a, a nightmare of irregularity. And it does have a lot of problems as well of, uh, well, similarity of meanings and pronunciation. Just like the person who got on the ship or got on the ferry boat and he saw a great placard which said, 
English pronounced success, and he just shot himself. <laughs> there are differences in the consonants. Take the R, for instance. The American talks about a bird, the Scotsman about a bar, and the Cockney about a bird. Bird, bar, and bird. That proves what I said. It is a mad language. Yes, the theory that everybody can speak English is the William Brown theory. If you know Richmond Crompton's William, just William, he said somewhere, I speak English, so it must be easy, so why can't all the foreigners learn English? I think one of the major disadvantages of English is that it ties you to a particular world view. It's the world view of the dominant American culture. And there's, of course, the old Victorian attitude. Everybody can understand English if only you shout loud enough. You say, this is the house that Jack built. At your bottom jaw does, this is the house that Jack built. I say, this is the house that Jack built. And my bottom jaw does, this is the house that Jack built. You understand? But of course. Esto es la casa que Jack faceva construir. Tizi es li dom quel Jack ha constructet. Basic English, which enjoyed substantial support from Winston Churchill, reduced the English vocabulary to a core of 850 words, which were meant to cover the needs of everyday life. The pared-down language is easy to read, but has some drawbacks in use. Thus, lipstick has to be rendered as stick of paint for the lips, and the postman said hello becomes the man who takes the letters to and from the post office said it is my hope that you are well this morning. One of my favourite uh, international auxiliary languages is named Novial, which means New International Auxiliary Language. It was created in 1928 by the famous Danish linguist Otto Jespersen, who was one of the leading experts on the history and development of the English language. Jespersen was also a great supporter of English as an international language. He described it as methodical, business-like, masculine. The language of grown-up men, with very little childish or feminine about it. La quina leziono, la manjo chambo. Learning Unit 5, Time Flies. Helen and Ian Phantom have brought up their three children to speak Esperanto as their first language. We live in, in Newbury, in Newbury in Berkshire, where we're in the depths of England, aren't we, and right in the middle of it. And perhaps it's, for many people, a little unusual to find a family that's speaking Esperanto all the time. But to us it's normal. This is merely the language in which we communicate. My first language is Esperanto. Afterwards, I started learning Dutch as well because we were living in Holland. We were, however, living in Holland in the German occupation period, so this was difficult, particularly as Esperanto wasn't the favourite language for the Germans and they were persecuting Esperantists. Esperantists have been persecuted throughout history, partly because it was invented by a Jew, and so in Germany that um, gave Hitler a good reason to suppress the Esperantists. Many Esperantists were sent to the gas chambers there. Stalin, who is said in his early youth to have started to learn Esperanto, turned against it very strongly. And one book that I've read on the subject of persecution of Esperantists uh, tells us that over 300,000 people were killed or imprisoned simply because they were Esperantists during the days of persecution. 
One of the problems Esperantists have frequently faced is that they are seen as being against the establishment. They have wide international contacts, which is perceived as a threat to the established regime. And even if they are not politically active, they are perceived as undesirable people and uh, are often the first people to suffer if there is any kind of countdown. Januaro. Febul. Maino tree. Maino tetra. Mayo. Junio. Julio. Gustul. Septembre. Octobro. Novembro. Decembro. Henry Jacob learned the language Edo as a boy in Berlin. Edo means offspring in Esperanto, from which it was derived. But the two languages were for a time in competition. Well, I learned Edo as a very young boy. I was about seven or eight. My mother learned, she, she spoke it. My father spoke, my brother learned it. He was better than I. He was a year older. And so the whole family went to the first conference in Dessau in 1922. The Catholic Church supported Edo because they had a tradition of using Latin. But Latin is far too difficult. So they, we had a large number of Catholic priests who learned Edo because they thought it would, could be used instead of Latin. Edo developed its own movement, but never grew as strong as the Esperanto movement. But as a language, in my opinion, it was far superior. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And they said to one another, go to, let us make brick. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the whole earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. The interlingua people get hot under the collar about Esperanto because we are being successful and they are not. Well, they just don't like competition. Uh, that is why they get upset about interlingua. They did make a tape in interlingua where people read out selections of interlingua. Well, I have listened to it. I can't understand it. Obviously, I'm not sufficiently intelligent and not sufficiently erudite about languages. They will very often get hot under the collar because I think with Esperanto, the Esperantists I know, they seem to be embracing not a language but a cause. And it's their cause that's being attacked. Into forward gear, full speed ahead. In the late 1960s, Fiat distributed several promotional films in Esperanto. Altas Cai rimarca surprise che la man bremso bona efficas sur veturilo con quvar disca i bremsoi non mi ecveturas de nove Ja, 
Esperanto is a language, but it is more than a language. It is also an idea, if you like, an ideal. One of the things that Esperantists have clearly believed throughout the whole history of the language is that communication is of paramount importance in the modern world. If people cannot speak to other people, then the world has little future. An international language isn't going to bring peace. It's not going to usher in a utopia. An international language can help toward it, yes. Uh, an international language can help to bring peace, but like the atom, spitting in the atom, it can be used for destructive purposes as well as for peaceful purposes. Oh, Rura. Are you open? Me prefer a Mari, me am a little tour. Hastings is a blue top of me past Bendio. It's sometimes difficult for speakers of English to grasp the idea that there are people in the world who speak other languages um, and any minority language or any speaker of a minority language tends to be regarded as, as something strange or eccentric. Mi ti seras che ciui e la mo tutta mondo parolu esperanto. Sometimes you, people may be regarded as cranks who talk about ways of improving the world um, but after all, as someone once said, a crank is a, a part of uh, the machinery which gets the, the motor going. And if, if these people have the, ha, can succeed in, in the role of uh, getting some movement forward, then okay, it's good that they are cranks. Mm -hmm.